8 is basically reading it. Now, here's what you got going on in chapter 8. All of this instruction, remember when God gave the instruction to the children of Israel for the building of the furnishings for the tabernacle and the tabernacle itself? Well, he gave them all those directions, but then the day came when they had to actually do it. They had to build it. So now God has given the priests all the instructions about the priesthood, the offerings, the clothes that they're to wear, the anointing oil, all this stuff. So now they need to do this. He's going to establish the priesthood. So you got this problem here in that God has established this entire worship system based upon sacrifice, but the people couldn't offer the sacrifices on their own. They needed a priest to do it. So God says, now's the time to formally establish the Levitical priesthood or the Aaronic priesthood. That's what's happening here. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take Aaron and his sons with him and the garments and the anointing oil. All of this we've looked at in the book of, of Exodus. The anointing oil, a bull is a sin offering, two rams and a basket of unleavened bread. And gather all the congregation together at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So this, uh, the, the ordaining of the priests uh, to now uh, take their position as the spiritual leaders or kind of mediators as priests in the nation of Israel was to be a public thing to be witnessed by all of the people very serious and so the Lord did Moses did as the Lord commanded him and the congregation was gathered together at the door of the tabernacle of meeting and Moses said to the congregation this is what the Lord commanded to be done and then Moses brought Aaron and his sons washed them with water there at the bronze laver and uh, uh, washed them there uh, as, as again Exodus had, had declared would uh, be the case the problem they were washed probably the entirety of their bodies at this particular point point though they were wearing garments uh, but washed from head to toe from this point on they will only wash their hands and their feet in the in the bronze laver but here it's it's a whole body wash it speaks of ceremonial cleansing holiness before the people and he put the tunic on him girded him with the sash so these are the the garments that the high priest would wear that would identify him as the high priest clothed him with the robe put the ephod on him and he girded him with the intricately woven band of the ephod and with it tied the ephod on him and then he put the breastplate on him and he put the urim and the thummim in the breastplate and he put the turban on his head also on the turban and on its front he put the golden plate the golden holy crown as the Lord had commanded Moses and so very impressive now to see Aaron dressed in, in uh, this uh, these things that would identify him as the high priest but I'll tell you it, it plays very much a second fiddle to what you and I are able to wear as New Testament priests which is the righteousness of Christ clothed in the righteousness of, of Christ nothing is superior in the Old Testament to the New Covenant and Moses took the anointing oil and he anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it consecrated them he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times anointed the altar with all its utensils and the laver and its base to consecrate them then he poured some he sprinkled it on everything else he poured some of the anointing oil on the head and Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him oil a symbol of the Holy Spirit not sprinkled on him but poured upon him all a picture of Jesus our high priest when he was there being water baptized at the Jordan River came up out of the water the Holy Spirit came upon him poured upon him to begin his public ministry and so the imagery of it even there in the Old Testament and then Moses brought Aaron's sons put their garments on them their tunics girded them with sashes put hats on them as the Lord had commanded Moses and then he brought the bull for the sin offering that were necessary uh, for the priests and then Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull for the sin offering and Moses killed it so it's up to this point Moses is still killing the animals it hasn't been turned over to Aaron uh, yet so here is is um, if the priest Aaron the high priest before he can even deal with the people he needs to have a sin offering offered for his own sin Every single time that that happened, it was reinforced in his mind as a priest that he was a sinner. 
dealing with sinners. The, uh, the greatest of God's people, no matter who they are, they are at best one sinner ministering to other sinners. It's only Jesus as the great high priest who comes in as the sinless one that now ministers to us. No one else has any reason for pride in, in their service to the Lord. Now you think about Aaron. This is all grace, isn't it? Aaron, uh, the golden calf, <laughs> Aaron on things. And uh, so here is this, this uh, uh, calf, so to speak, being sacrificed in order for him uh, is a recognition of his sinfulness. He's a sinful man ministering to sinful people in order to keep him humble, probably reminded him of the event. And, uh, uh, it, but it's, it's true of all of us who serve the Lord. So Moses killed it. And he took the blood and put some on, uh, some on the horns of the altar all around with his finger and he purified the altar. And he poured the blood at the base of the altar and consecrated it to make atonement for it. Then he took all of the fat that was on the entrails, the fatty lobe attached to the liver and the two kidneys with their fat and Moses burned them on the altar. But the bull, its hide, its flesh, its offal, he burned with fire outside the camp as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses concerning the sin offering. And then he brought the ram as the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and Moses killed it. Then he sprinkled the blood all around the altar. He cut the ram in pieces, and Moses burned the head, the pieces, and the fat. Then he washed the entrails and the legs in water, and Moses burned the whole ram on the altar. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And then he brought the second ram, the ram of consecration. And then Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. All of this we've looked at uh, previously. And Moses killed it. Also, he took some of the blood, put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear and the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. And what that symbolized was that uh, he was his life as a high priest or as a priest was uh, set aside for God's use from head to toe. His whole life, his ear was given over to the voice of God, his hands were to be given over to the work of God, his feet were to be given over to the ways of God. And this was just reinforced in a physical way. It's really very beautiful, isn't it? If you woke up in the morning and someone did something like that just to remind you, you know, we have the Holy Spirit to do that, but it's a good reminder. And then he brought Aaron's sons... And Moses put some of the blood then on the tips of their right ears, on the thumbs of their right hands, on the big toes of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood all around the altar. And then he took the fat and the fat tail, all the fat that was on the entrails, the fatty lobe attached to the liver, the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh. And from the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord, he took one unleavened cake, a cake of bread anointed with oil and one wafer, and he put them on the fat on, and on the right thigh. And he put all these in Aaron's hands and in his son's hands and they waved them as a wave offering before the Lord. Then Moses took them from their hands, burned them on the altar, on the burnt offering. They were consecration offerings for a sweet aroma. That was an offering made by fire to the Lord. And Moses took the breast and waved it as a wave offering before the Lord. It was Moses' part of the ram of consecration as the Lord had commanded Moses. And then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood that was on the altar, sprinkled it on Aaron and on his garments, on his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he consecrated Aaron and his garments and his sons and the garments of his sons with him. Without this anointing of oil and blood without the anointing of the Holy Spirit these were just going to be men with really fancy clothes on but it's the oil and it's the same thing with our lives it is only the application of the sacrifice of Jesus to our lives by becoming saved then the application of the Holy Spirit to our lives 
that allows us to be what God has called us to be as New Testament priests in, in our time in human history. And uh, then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of meeting and eat it there with the bread that is in the basket of consecration offerings, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. Whatever remains of the flesh and of the bread you shall burn with fire. And you shall not go outside the door of the tabernacle of meeting for seven days, until the days of your consecration are ended, for seven days uh, he shall consecrate you. And so they performed all of these things in one day. And then for seven more days after that, uh, uh, they, they were to stay within the area of, of the tabernacle. The, that length of time, the seven days, a total of eight days, what that would do is confirm to the people the importance of what has just happened, the establishing of the Aaronic priesthood, a way to have fellowship with God, even by means of human sacrifice, was something no one else had in the Old Testament. So it spoke to them of the importance of it. The number seven is, biblically, is the number of completion. It's the number of perfection. Seven days in a week, seven colors in the rainbow, etc. So what this spoke of, even in terms of the number of days that all of this was going on, it spoke of the priest's complete uh, sanctification or consecration to the Lord. I think it's very, very beautiful. I like the detail of the Lord in all of this. And uh, therefore, um, um, and as was done this day, so the Lord has commanded to do, to make atonement for you. Therefore you shall stay at the door of the tabernacle of meeting day and night for seven days and keep the charge of the Lord so that you may not die for so I have been, uh, so I have been commanded. So under penalty of death not to leave during that time. And so beautiful here, Aaron and his sons did all that the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses, completely obedient to him, which then allows the Lord to bless them in a way that he wanted to bless them, to publicly bless them. And then we get into that in uh, chapter 9 next week. If the worship team come forward, uh, that would be great. I'd like to just uh, spend a, a little bit of time before we close this evening just worshiping the Lord. I mean, you, we go through all of this and it's, it's technical and people can sometimes wonder, you know, especially if I'm reading through it and not going into the detail like before, what does this mean? And, and, and then I think it's important to come aside and spend a little time just worshiping Jesus, who is... I mean, unique in human history, both the high priest and the sacrifice. All of this 